Okay, welcome to part C. Like last time, you wrote a function to calculate the distance between two objects on a two-dimensional plane. Today, we'll use this function to determine whether two game objects will collide. When have two objects collided? Earlier, we looked at two circles and how, or, or ellipses and saw that, that when the distance between them was less than the sum of their radii, they collided. So objects with more interesting outlines than circles can be tricky to precisely compute. But most games don't have to be precise. Um, they move too fast for most people to notice. So, um, and we do this a lot in programming where we, um, you know, we're not too concerned with being exactly um, on the edge of the object. Let's just make a guess and see how the game works. And if it works okay, then we can leave it. If, it, um, if we need to change it, we can change it. So all we really need to do is figure out when two objects are close enough to detect a collision. So 50 pixels, that's what we'll just we'll say for now, is 50 pixels is a sufficient distance for collecting collisions between your player and your danger. So we won't worry exactly what shape your player, your danger is, and if the center of your object is within, um, you know, the exact um, distance of the, the two radii, we'll just say 50. Um, so it, now if, if you're using different size images, um, then, and it looks weird, um, where the objects are too far, actually too far away and they, they, they appear to collide or if they actually overlap, then you can change it. So how do we check whether these two points on the plane, um, the distance between them is less than 50? Um, or less than 20. Well, let's look at page 31 in the design recipe there. Collide. Write a function collide that takes four inputs. X coordinate of the player, Y coordinate of the player, X coordinate of another character, Y coordinate of another character. Um, and determine whether the coordinates of the player are within 50 pixels of the coordinates of the other character. Okay? So, let's uh, look back at our game file. I think we have a skeleton in here. Yes? All right, collide. All right, takes four numbers, just like our previous one did. We have, I said, are they close enough for a collision? Let's make that a little better. We have, um, let's just say, given the coordinates of a player and another character. Are they close enough for a cohesion? That's fine. That's, we can leave that. All right. Um, and so it's going to be a, a Boolean value, true or false, right? So we'll say collide, huh? We'll put a question mark in our name, in our name to indicate we're going to return a Boolean value. So either they are closer than 50 or not. And if they're closer than 50, we'll say true. And if they're farther than 50, we'll say false, right? Um, and... So let's see, what's some examples? I don't really want to calculate too many. Eh, let's see. Um, let's do some that we know. All right, so we can use our distance from before. And I'm just going to use my mouse on this screen to pretend like, all right, we have 0, 0 down here, right? And then we have um, 0, or let's say we have um, 640 0 in the lower right hand corner. We have 640 480 here, and we have 0 um, 480 up here. So let's just do some things that are really we know are far apart. Like let's do 50 um, 50, which is somewhere down here, right? And let's do um, 400 400, somewhere up there, right? So we can do distance, 
50, 50, 400, 400, and they should be pretty far away. 494. They're 494 away. That makes sense. Now let's do two of them that are really close to the middle. Let's do um, distance 200, 200, and 201, 201. Right, so those dudes are almost on top of each other. And the fact that their distance is going to be the square root of 2, right, which is inexact to 1 point something. So that's less than 50. All right, so those are, those are good. So we want to say, example, collide. Huh? Distance of those guys, so they were far apart. They will not collide. We'll say false. And we'll say example, collide. And these guys were really close to each other. We want to say true. All right, we can run it now. And in fact, one of you know one of those will pass because we we're giving it a default of false. One of those should fail. Uh, or I got bad syntax. Oh, 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 okay. All right. All right, yep, 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 yep. All right. So we want to... So I just, I just want to say... All right, I want to use distance inside there, right, like I did before, but I can't put it in like that. Okay. Now that should be better. Better? Good, good. One of them found. All right. So we know we're going to have a Boolean, so we could even use um, what we know. We, 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 we checked to see if it was greater than 50, right? So we want to say, is something, I'll say, let's do, is 50, uh, something greater than 50. So something, we'll put a placeholder there, dot, 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 greater than 50. If it is, it'll return, let's see, we can do it without adding either any other things. If we do, will it collide? Collide means it's less than 50. So let's say, let's do it this way. So is our distance less than 50? If it is less than 50, it collides, which means true, and this will return true if it's less than 50. And otherwise, it'll return false. So we don't even need to put any trues or falses in there. If we get this part right, then it'll automatically um, do the right thing. So what goes in here? All right. Just distance of these four things, I think. Right? We know that, that our distance formula is going to return all right, of that. All right, so let's walk through that with this guy. So these two that are very far apart. So that was, um, in fact, let's do this again. All right, so that was 494. So that means this part is going to be 494 and it says is a less than B so this is not less than 50 so that means it will be false which means they will not collide and in boolean it's hard to you, you know we can use different example we, we could say safe Right, and safe is the opposite of collide. So that's why you got to walk through the Boolean um, things and figure out. I mean, if we want to use the collide, then that means that our distance is going to be less than 50. So I think this is probably right, but that's why it's really important to have good examples. So let's run that and see if we pass our examples. If not, it'll tell us what our numbers are. 
All right, we passed our examples. Our bear still works. He still shoots stars. Cool. Um. Yeah. Okay. So that turned out not to be too bad since we already had this. Um, and now we can test um, whether any of our game elements collide, which is going to be able to um, determine um, what happens. We still need. We're still going to need to um, um, not have our our game elements shooting off in random directions and all of that stuff. But um, We'll, we'll work on that next time. So let's go back here. We used our distance. We entered our collide function. Um, let's go back. What is making our target and everything automatically Well, let's see. We could have it wrap. So let's see. What was our green circle? So that's the target. And let's find update target. Update target. All right. And all it's doing is adding 50 so that's, that's why it's going it goes pretty fast i actually want it to go slower so let's do 30. all right so that's what's going to do that but then that's getting called every that's getting called constantly so that's constantly moving um let's put in a little thing let's say let's wrap it so if the x coordinate is greater than. So, what's the edge of the screen? Um, this is zero over here, and we decided this was 640. Um, so, let's say it's greater than 640. Set it to zero, right? So, at 640. It'll jump back to zero, and it'll look like it's wrapping around. So let's put in a con. At least two cases. And we can say, let's go ahead and do this test. If greater than x, 640 then zero, right? Because what's, what's, what's coming out is the x. It's the next x, right? So if it's greater, then it's zero. Otherwise, which is going to be else, we want to do, we're just going to move this around, the old thing. We just update it by that. So I think that's correct. It doesn't change either of these tests. Um, let's try it. Oh, I didn't put it. I, I, I copied and pasted, but I didn't actually put it in the right place. There. I put that. There. All right, good. Well, at least it's disappearing when that, that happened. How did that? Uh, so the Y coordinate is jumping around when I run into it. All right, that's cool. Um, 
Uh, it's back to 150, we got 130. Where am I? Oh, I, I changed, uh, remember I changed the speed of that? Um, and I didn't change my example, so let's do that and that. All right, good. Now, uh, let's do the same thing for... Uh, Now that we have that running in a diagonal, what was that thing called? The danger, yeah. Danger. So a lot of the, some of this stuff is built into the kind of the teach pack that we're calling here, um, and I don't know exactly what's built in, but let's see. Let's let's see what happens if we update our danger and let it keep running. So right now. It's moving in the diagonal, right? And so it's moving in a diagonal like this, um, where it's going down and to the left. And let's see if, so if it got to over here, right? Where its X coordinate was less than zero, then we'd want it to come back up here somewhere where doesn't matter where it comes back it just needs an x coordinate that is you know sometime greater than zero same thing if it goes off the bottom here if its y coordinate is less than zero then we just need to start it over so let's make it um, we'll test both of those things. So let's give me some room here. Let's see con. And there's one for X, there's one for Y, and there's otherwise. So we'll say if um, the X coordinate is less than zero, then we want to return uh, x. We want to return 640 for x, right? And the original y. No, wait, let's see. So we got to do this as a positive, right? Right, we got to say make positive. <laughs> And we want to do 640 and the original Y. Yep, I think that's right. All right, now that's it can be a template for our next one. So in this one, we want to say if Y is less than zero, then we want to make Uh, the original X and we want to do 480 for Y right so that should jump it back to the top and then otherwise we want to do our old thing so I'm going to take that from down here and cut it cut and then put else right here e -L -S -S -E, and then paste it I'm going to hit tabs and all these, line them up. Uh, that did not change. We didn't change our pace, so it's still going pretty fast. Um, let's see what that does. I'm hoping it'll wrap it in a kind of a predictable way. There it goes. All right, cool. Now, see, it's got built in. All right, I'm going to try to hit it. Come on. Boom! <laughs> cool. All right, and I guess the the game's over then. So the target has something built in. So like, you know, like I said, in the teach pack, the target has something built in where it um, it does that. So um, I haven't done safe lunch and safe free. Um, so yeah, we can we can play with that. But if you want to update yours so that the um, the target keeps going, that's an example, um, or that the danger keeps going. That's an example, and um, we can decide how you want to move your 
um, items around, but it looks like it's, it's already built in that if you hit the um, danger, it, it explodes. If you hit the target, then it um, disappears and starts over. Um, so we could we could use that to to do scoring or whatever. Bye.